It's Friday, September 13, 2019. As I sit in my chair today, the markets are pretty flat. Dow Jones is up about 30 points. We'll see where it all ends up at the end of the day. But in the meantime, I want to go over a few articles with you. Uh, as we are approaching all-time highs in the market, as complacency is coming back. People have already forgotten what we saw last December, what we just saw a, a few weeks ago. Uh, people have already forgotten about it. Complacency is already setting in. Optimism is back uh, with, the, with the trade war with China. So complacency, optimism, everything is fine. Life goes on. But I want to go over a few things to you and, and explain to you why this is just an illusion and why people are being fooled. Marketwatch.com today. Retail sales up, grew faster than expected in August. This is great news. Uh, retail sales were up 0.4%. So we hear all about the retail apocalypse, the closing of stores, but yet uh, we're being told that retail sales were up 0.4%. You would think that's great news, but here is the catch, ladies and gentlemen. The rise was driven entirely by purchases of new cars and trucks. And how are people now purchasing new cars and trucks? It's called subprime loans. You know, the same type of loans that started uh, the housing crash and the financial collapse back in 2008. You know, those loans that people were getting in 2005 and six that uh, ignited uh, the financial disaster of 2008. Well, the auto industry now piling up cars on those lots, acres and acres of cars, figured out, well, why don't we just do what the housing industry did back in the mid 2000s? We gotta get rid of these cars. So the, housing, or the uh, auto industry is now selling cars to unqualified buyers. And so many people now can go in and buy a car without even having their income verified. As I, I've told you many times, I've had a few people, a few acquaintances that have done that. They were never even asked to verify their income. So uh, they are doing whatever they have to do to make a sale to get those cars off the lot. The 2020s are coming and there are lots that still have brand new 2018s. It's a disaster. Uh, you look at the RV industries uh, falling off of a cliff. I was in San Bernardino uh, a couple days ago. We drove by an R a couple RV lots and it was just a sea of RVs and fifth wheelers. Uh, same thing with a lot of the um, uh, auto lots, car lots, just mountains of automobiles. So they're going to do whatever they have to do to move this inventory, no matter how dangerous it is. But now an unqualified buyer can go in and buy a brand new car or truck and not even have to verify their income. This is how dangerous things are becoming in this economy. Retail sales minus auto sales was flat. Markets are also up right now today. As I said, Dow Jones is up around 30 points. Things are flat, but we are approaching all-time highs. Another reason being we have optimism in the market, optimism that this trade war with China is going to come together. And one of the biggest ones is you know we're getting a rate cut this month. I'm 97% certain we will see a 25 basis uh, point rate cut this month. So um, it all looks good from the outside, but when you dig down and really look at what's going on, this is a complete illusion. Uh, they are bamboozling the American public with what is really going on with this economy. But most Americans are starting to figure it out that they're reliant on credit cards to get by, they have no savings, they're living paycheck to paycheck. So no matter how much people wanna deny it, no matter how much the media wants to lie to everybody, uh, deep down, I think most people understand that their life is not getting better as they are acquiring no savings, no assets, they're acquiring debt, they're, they're going to be able to drive a new car with eight years of payments. Um, if that's a, a healthy economy, uh, it, that's very sad. Bloomberg, corporations piling up debt. So not only the consumer uh, piling up debt, but corporations. Last week, companies borrowed $74 billion in the U.S. investment-grade bond market. Healthy economy, right? This was the largest corporate debt increase for any 
comparable period since they started tracking such things back in 1972. Borrowing also spilled into junk bonds and leveraged loans as well. There was a $16 billion increase in the U.S. leveraged loan market last week. Leveraged loans are made uh, to firms deeply in debt. These are like subprime loans for corporations. They are risky and could be difficult to either collect or to resell in a downturn, putting both the lender and the borrower at risk. Investment grade debt outstanding totaled $5.8 trillion as of September Fourth, more than double the level a decade ago. If this economy is doing so well, how come these debt ratios, uh, this amount of debt just continues to climb? Global corporate borrowing set a record of $140 billion last week. According to the Fed, growth in business debt has outpaced GDP growth for the last decade. Consumer debt is exploding, and at some point, debt has to be repaid. Can't keep, listen, we cannot keep rates at zero forever. Economies need savings. Uh, you and I need savings. You know, we are going to be punished. We are being punished right now if we're saving money. And very soon, you will see 0% interest rates in America and quite possibly negative. That means you're going to be paying the bank to lend them your money. And this is another reason why it, I'm so adamant that you are acquiring hard assets like gold and silver. They got rocked today. This is a great day to buy on this dip to be acquiring hard assets. You know, this is the stuff you should be buying, the stuff that's on sale, the stuff that's getting beat up, not these overvalued assets on the stock market. You know, uh, we were always told buy low, sell high. Why would anybody be buying these overvalued stocks, bonds, real estate, any of this stuff, uh, when you could be buying the two most undervalued assets on the entire planet, gold and silver, they're on sale. This is a blue light special. And when we see where this is all heading, 0% rates, negative rates, paying banks to lend your money to them, why would you not be protecting yourselves? Why put your money in a bank? Why not be holding gold, silver? Uh, be your own bank. Uh, stash your cash in a safe place because these banks are criminals. These are the enemy. The, the Federal Reserve is your enemy. They are not your friend. They are the ones doing this destruction to the economy. Uh, these banks have done you no service. They're, they're literally raping you. Uh, anytime you open up a savings or checking account, uh, it, it, they are absolutely despicable. You should do whatever you can do to avoid working or, or uh, putting your money in a bank. Now listen, I know that we all have bills to pay. Keep the bare minimum in your accounts to pay bills. Put your cash in your assets somewhere else. Zero hedge this morning. Banks seek lower credit score requirements targeting over 50 million new subprime borrowers. There right now is a massive avalanche of debt here in the United States of America. And now they wanna add more by lending to these uh, less credit worthy individuals creating even a bigger, more dangerous avalanche of debt. Banks are targeting an estimated 53 million US adults that don't have credit scores and 56 million that have subprime scores. Ask yourself, what could possibly go wrong with this? Didn't, didn't we not learn a lesson back in 2008? Uh, banks say that a lot of these people might be new to the US. And so uh, they wanna take them and make them debt slaves also. Nobody's immune to this. So uh, whether you're new to the US, born at the US, uh, whether you're legal, uh, you, you know, here um, illegally, they wanna make you a debt slave. So since you have a copy of your cell phone bill, uh, a copy of your water bill, uh, that's about all they're going to need. And now you'll be able to buy to borrow $50,000 to, to go buy a car uh, or to go buy a house. All you need now, uh, apparently, with what the banks are saying is, you know, a copy of your cell phone bill since you have no credit history. So we'll take a copy of your cell phone bill, your water bill, maybe a rent payment. And uh, here you go. You now have credit with the bank. Very disastrous. This is so irresponsible, so reckless. And America is going to pay a severe price 
for this recklessness. Another good article on Zero Hedge today. Make sure you're verifying all this. Make sure that you're you're really opening up your own two eyes, your two ears, um, reading and listening uh, for yourself, and do your due diligence on what's really happening here. Zero Hedge bidding wars for U.S. homes collapse to eight-year low. Bidding wars for homes in Seattle, San Jose, San Francisco have crashed in the past year. And these are bellwethers, these areas. These were super, super hot, some of the hottest housing markets on the planet, reflecting an alarming trend nationally, according to Redfin. People are getting uncomfortable with the sky high housing prices, increasing mortgage rates and economic uncertainty. Even with eight months of declining mortgage rates in 2019, bidding wars continue to drop. As of Wednesday, mortgage applications continue to fall. And when you take into account that people are hearing more and more about recession, uh, they're seeing uncertainty in their own economic life, and many people are clearly just tapped out. They're living on credit cards. And if you're living on credit cards, you're living on borrowed time because they are not going to last forever. Many people are on borrowed time. Some know it, some don't. And many people right now, because of the massive amount of debt that they're carrying, this debt load of student loans, uh, car payments, uh, uh, medical bills, uh, they cannot qualify for a home. So you're taking these sky high prices and the average American is riddled with debt. They simply cannot qualify for a home loan. Okay. Obesity levels reach nearly 40% in parts of the US. Not only do we have a financial crisis, a financial emergency here in America, we are witnessing a health crisis taking place at the same time. We're watching people just give up. People don't care about their image. People don't care about their quality of life and people don't care about their health. And it's really shocking to see how people are just quitting, giving up, not caring, um, not caring about living long. And it's just shocking. Um, you can go to your local Walmart and see exactly what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, uh, the landscape of America now is beginning to look more and more like your local Walmart. Walmart now is coming to you. It's everywhere. It's like a pandemic and it's very, very uh, unhealthy and it's not good for the future of this country. They, they put a map in the sun and this is very interesting. Anything in the red is 30% or above obesity in America. The healthiest states were the District of Columbia, Hawaii, and Colorado. Their rates of obesity were uh, 20 to 25%. West Virginia and Mississippi, they're near 40%. And when I look at these numbers, I mean, just look at the red. That's more than half the country 30% or above obesity. And as I said earlier, 40% in many parts of, of America, 40% or more. And this is really uh, concerning uh, when we, we, we talk about the future of America, the longevity of America. Um, I mean, not only are we being threatened with a economic collapse, uh, we're being threatened with this massive amount of debt, but Americans are being threatened with, their, with, with the future of their lives, with obesity, the health issues that this brings along, the quality of life, the, stan the, the standard of living. Uh, this is going to be a huge killer, and it's going to really uh, be a drag, a huge burden on our healthcare system. And guess who's going to pay for that too? We are. Uh, but instead of Americans taking pride in themselves, the pride in the quality of their life, pride in their image, uh, just wanting to be healthier, to live long, to, to uh, have a long life, uh, to take care of their kids and grow up with their families and really enjoy life, most of these people are not going to have that. They're going to have a horrible quality of life. Obesity brings in you know, many multiples of disease. And I just don't see how we can have a strong country 
when the people in America are just giving up on themselves. Uh, people are absolutely careless and reckless the way they eat. Not to say that I eat perfectly, I certainly don't, but I make sure that I do get exercise, I do make sure that I eat somewhat healthy, but I do make sure that I'm active and that, that I'm getting some workouts in and that, that I'm doing something uh, to promote uh, a healthy life. During a depression, a collapse, uh, you know, things happening socially, you're gonna be dependent on that body to get you through it, all right? Um, how are these people going to get through tough times when they're three, four, 500 pounds? They're not, these are gonna be victims. And so if you're one of these people right now, take today and start changing your life. Start getting in better shape. You gotta get in the mindset, you gotta, you gotta physically train your body uh, to be stronger and faster, because during a collapse, you're gonna be reliant on that mindset, on that physical body, on God, being you know, spiritually stronger and you know, financially stronger by uh, accumulating assets and, and putting money away and, and putting all your preps away. But if you're just gonna be a, a lazy person, a, somebody who doesn't care, who's already given up right now, you are gonna be a victim during a collapse. Do not be one of these people right now you can start eating better. You can get out to a gym. You can get out to the range. You can get to a track and start running, walking, uh, and start taking pride in your life and having a better, uh, healthier standard of life. You do not want to be an obese person during a collapse. You will not survive it. I'm going to leave it there today. God bless America. God bless every one of you. Make sure you are praying for this country. Make sure you are getting in better physical shape, spiritual shape, mental shape, and financial shape. Talk to you very soon.